Okay, we're back here with the next Unity Coding Tips tutorial. Uh, hopefully you'll actually be able to hear me for this one. I dug up an old microphone to get this one rolling. Okay, so uh, the latest requests have been for debugging. Apparently uh, there is a debugger built into Unity that nobody knows exists. Uh, there's also a couple other little tricks that, uh, that we're going to go into here. So uh, we're just going to dive right in. It's not going to be too much code in this one, but we're going to end up uh, like the other ones with a nice useful class. So project's pretty simple. All we have is one script and that's going to be it. So it's not much else to see here. So we're going to jump back into Mono Develop, And uh, so the first thing you'll see in here is uh, uh, just an empty on GUI. So we're going to dump one method in here. And this is just going to be a little GUI button that calls log warn and error. So this D class, this is what we're going to be making in this tutorial. It's, uh, it's going to be a debug class that's going to help us out with debugging and uh, make life a lot easier for when you're trying to debug uh, complex situations. So you can see it kind of mimics debug. The, the debug class in fact wraps a lot of the methods. So there's a, a log method, a warn method, an error method. And uh, you know, the only difference between this and debug.log on the surface is that you can use uh, standard.net formatting. So this is, uh, you know, you can still do your little, you know, if you wanted to do a, like a plus here and then put your other string, you can do that, but it keeps the code uh, a little easier to read if you use the formatting parameters. And, uh, you know, this is just an example of formatting a float. So instead of printing out this big old float, this will just print out one decimal point. Uh, this one here is just going to be a string replacement. So this is actually, uh, this S is a string, as you can see. And uh, you can put as many of these as you want, and you just increment the number, and you can add uh, to your debugs. That way you don't have to keep doing uh, plus and concatenating strings. So we're going to run this just to see what it does. So you can see it's just real simple, d.log, d.warn, d.error. And let's see what we get. So we push that, and sure enough, we have a log, and you can see that it's formatted 12.1, just like we expected because we put that in the formatter. We have a warning and then we have uh, the error printed here and that string's default values doodler which we'll, uh, we'll dive into a little bit in a second. So not much there but let's see what power we have by making this class. So the D class is, is real simple. Um, for now we're just going to focus on the three methods here and we have uh, the d.log, d.warn, d.error and uh, you're going to see this uh, attribute on top of these and it's the system.diagnostics.conditional so what this does is it it, uh, it it basically allows you to uh, to decide which methods are going to be compiled into your code and which ones are not so in this particular case uh, we're saying if debug level log exists then we're going to go ahead and this method will exist and it'll call it'll call through to debug.log. Uh, same thing for here, debug level warn, and here debug level error. So what we could do for this now is go over here. We're gonna comment out log and warn, and we're gonna only have defined debug level error. And just a brief note here, when you do defines, it has to be the first line in the class. You you can't do this, that won't work. It has to be the top line or else uh, the compiler won't pick it up. Okay, so now we've commented out the defines for debug level log and debug level warn. So that's the log and warn methods, but we left in debug level error. So we're going to jump back over here and we're going to click the same button here. And you can see now only the errors is being printed out. So what, what this has basically done is when it compiled this, it actually removes that code for you. So those calls don't exist anymore. So the, the usefulness of this is you can litter your code with, with debug logs. And you know previously, if you were doing Unity's debug.log, debug.warn, and debug.error, you, you then have to go through and delete them and comment them out. Now you can just set your log levels in here by just commenting or uncommenting here. And to make this a little bit more useful, what we're going to do is add second one here. So let's do this. So now this one will actually fire if log or warn. Let's just test that. So we're only going to have, let's just do warn. So the only thing defined is going to be debug level warn. 
So we go back over here, hit the play button, and we're going to play this. And sure enough, we have our log and our warn, but not our error. And that is, of course, because debug level error is still commented out. So just to expand on this, to make this system uh, work the way you would expect it, we're going to do that. So now if anything is defined, log warn or error, your log messages will, will get sent. If warn or error is, uh, is defined, then you'll get warns. And if error is defined, you'll get errors. So now you have a, a real three-layer logging system. And you can add layers if you wanted. You can, you can uh, you know, if, you're, if your game gets real complex, you can have, uh, you know, debugs for networking. And just you, you go up here and you define uh, debug networking. And, you know, go to town with these. Just make as many as you need and make as many log methods as you need. And uh, just use the conditionals, and you can just turn on and off logging at will, which makes things a lot easier because then you don't have to worry about removing them from, from your game later on. You could always leave them in because now what we do when we're ready to release is we just turn them all off. We we'll go over here, and now we get nothing. So those, those have been compiled out, all the calls to log one and error. So just like that, we have a, a really nice compartmentalized debugging solution that will uh, you know, help out a lot with, uh, with complex projects. So to expand on this a bit, we are going to have a look at the rest of the methods in this class. So we've seen these three. So now we're going to jump down to this. So assert is, uh, is traditionally used in uh, programming so that you can check your input methods. You know, For instance, if you have a method that takes in a string, you can just assert that the string is actually a string and that it's not null. And if it is null, then you can throw an error. And that's kind of what we're going to be doing here. So we have, uh, you know, this is going to be something that we, we want if Unity Editor or uh, debug level log is on. And you could do this just for the editor if you wanted to, or you, know, you could even do these down to, and you can make conditionals for anything if, you know, Unity iPhone. So that way only if you're compiling for iPhone will you see these. So it's real simple. All it's going to do is uh, they're all going to call through to this. This is the method that actually checks what's happening here. And you can see it has uh, three parameters, a condition, which is a Boolean. And if that condition evaluates to false, that's when uh, our assert fails. So what we do is we do a debug log error. And you have uh, an optional string you can pass in. And this will just help you out if uh, you know, you're dumping lots of logs and the asserts failed. You can just uh, dump a string in there that's informative to you. And we also have a pause on fail here. And uh, th this is uh, basically uh, just for the Unity editor. So uh, if you have pause on fail set to true, it'll call a debug break. And what that does is it's essentially like uh, clicking the pause button on the Unity editor. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and dump a couple methods in there. And we'll test out these. Okay, so we got a few more buttons, and you can see they're calling this protect my input method, which is defined down here. It takes in a string, and it takes in an int. And the names of these should be pretty obvious what we're looking for. Uh, the strings called should never be null, and the ints called should be above 100. So we'll take a look at what this does, and uh, all it's doing is an assert. It's checking to make sure that should never be null is not null, so that's what it's asserting. It's basically saying, um, you know, if this string's null, then, you know, this is going to evaluate to false and it's going to end up uh, dumping this error out. So then we have should be above 100 for our int and uh, it just does a quick check to make sure it's above 100. And this one's going to call pause. You can remember that last parameter there is pause on fail. So for, for that one we'll pause on fail. And we have a couple methods here to test this. So we have uh, protect my input. We're going to call it with null and that's going to make this assert fire for us. We have a uh, column with the low number, so 3 is obviously less than 100. So that will end up uh, uh, failing on that assert. And this one is calling it with valid input. So we have a valid string and a number above 100. So let's jump back over into Unity. And let's see what happens in the log here. So let's call it with valid input. OK, nothing, exactly what we expected. So we'll call it with a null string. And there's our assert failing. And uh, you can see it dumps that message to the console. So now we know exactly where that assert happened and what went wrong. And of course, in Unity, you can see the stack trace here. 
and uh, let's clear that out and we're going to call it with a low number. And remember, just to reiterate here, when we call with a low number, if, it's, if the number is below 100, this is going to fire and we're passing in true. So that means it's going to pause the editor. So we call the low number and bam, there we go. The editor is paused for us and we have our assert. And that's useful if you want to check values in the inspector, for instance, to make sure uh, they're what you expect. And there you go, that is an extremely useful little class there. And I use that everywhere. And uh, you know, for all you people who, um, who don't know, if you go on to github.com and search for Prime31, you'll find my repository there and all the code from these uh, tutorials will show up there. Okay, so one more thing we're gonna jump into here is, uh, is the Unity debugger. For some reason, nobody knows this exists. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, and give it a test. So Mono Develop has a debugger built into it and it's basically uh, controlled by these two buttons which we'll jump on in a second. So uh, you can set breakpoints in your code just like uh, any other debugger and so this is where this class up here, gnarly class, comes in. So you can see that uh, gnarly class consists of an inner class which has an inner struct which has uh, an int, a string, and a float so this is really just to, you know, once we get in the debugger, you'll see why I nested all these. And basically the, the gnarly class has a member inner class, and inner class has a member data holder. So it lets you just see how even really complex objects will uh, will be able to actually dig into these. And so let's put this debug line here. You can see we have gnarly class here. We're creating one. We have a string, a bool, and an int here. Okay, so once you have your breakpoints set up here, you can uh, start debugging now. So you have two ways you can do this. You could use this debug button, which would actually launch Unity if it wasn't already open. Or you can use the button next to it, which is attached to process, and that's what we're going to use. And you can see over here we have uh, Unity Editor listed, and we have Null. So I actually have a standalone running right now. I found standalones to be the easiest most stable to debug. So a lot of times what you have to do is just bring it to the forefront and you'll see that it just popped up here. So we can go ahead and connect to this now and we're in. So uh, you, can, you can see that the log warn and error button is the one we have set up here. So I'm going to go ahead and click this and bam, we're in a breakpoint. Uh, right over here we have our locals tab. This is the most useful. You can see everything that's in the current scope. So you can see all these variables. You can also uh, see their values by just hovering over them. You can dig into things too, and this is why we have this gnarly class. Just to give as an example, you can see we have uh, we have this here. You can pin things too, and now we can dig into it. So we can we can see that there's an inner class inside there, and then we have the holder class. Remember, it had a, a default value as doodler, so we can actually go in here, and we can change this. and that'll actually commit it and change it. So, uh, and again, you can also go through this uh, as well, going through um, all your, your locals here and find what you're looking for, and you can make changes here as well. And uh, you can see right here, we're gonna actually print out the value of the value we just changed. So again, you can see the debugger already picked it up. So one little trick here is whenever you're debugging in a, in a top level method, like on GUI update, fixed update, uh, the debugger will hang sometimes, but if you use run and then use continue, you'll have much better uh, better luck with it. So you can see we just jumped out of it and uh, and we're back in our game here and it's all working again. We can click it again and we get in here. And uh, you can see this is still pinned for us, so we can actually dig through and look at that string and it's still changed, obviously, because uh, nothing changed it back. All right, so this is a... Uh, super useful. Uh, remember the easiest way to debug that I've found personally is, is standalones. The editor works a lot of the times but, but sometimes you'll get some crashes uh, so I usually end up just building a standalone and uh, it seems a lot more stable and just click the stop button to stop the debugger. Alright that's it for this one. If anyone uh, has any suggestions for future video tutorials you know where to find us. Thanks. Mm -hmm.